No, worry and ma. But that's the wild shit, though, right? Like that little part of how we feel about this little person who can't speak or yeah. can't really do anything for Look us. At the pressure we're putting on this kid. We're putting so much <laughs> pressure on this kid. Your parents are probably like you're probably. We're probably never going to stop feeling like that. Like, yeah, it's not going to get easier when they can talk and could make their own decisions. Like, you still want your kids to like you, you know what I mean? And still feel like they're, you know, your your relationships on the right path, even if you're in their life or not in their life. But I mean, I guess the grandparent thing is is the perfect scenario for parents that feel that maybe they didn't do the best job or have the best relationship with their kids. Mm. Because grandparents, I mean, of course, it's specific to each family. Yeah, but yeah, for the yeah. most part, grandparents are the fun, like when you go see grandma and grandpa, yeah, great things of course. They happen got, for the most part. You can be to do except feed you, you're play not, with you. Don't have to be the bad guy. Yes. <laughs> like it's always fun to go see grandma and grandpa. Mm. So it's the perfect position to be in. Now they can be loved the way they think they should have been loved. And I'm like, well, you also had to be a dick because you have to raise a kid. Yes. Yes. And, and have you, uh, you're not, you're not there. I don't think you're there yet, but you haven't got to the point where like she's, your kid is like fully just frustrated you. <laughs> like I've had moments. Not, not the kid frustrated you, but like you're in the moment where it's like, oh my, like, you know, the first, you know, the, the moment she comes out. Yeah. They're like, there's absolutely no way I can ever be pissed off or be in a bad oh, mood yeah, yeah, because this sure. little thing has come into my life. And then the first time it happens to you, you're like, oh my God, I'm terrible. <laughs> oh my God. I'm just like, I'm just like everybody else. You know what I mean? But it's, um, man, um, it was, it was really an eye opening experience and, and it continues to be every single day, man. Like as much as you learn about, you know, your family dynamics, especially like your grandparents and stuff. I think the biggest thing about becoming a father is that you've learned just so much about yourself that yeah. nobody can talk to you about like yeah. no therapist, no parent, no friend. Like you have to experience like seeing your seed. Yeah. In front of you for you to ask yourself certain questions. So now you're just thinking of certain ways of how you look at your parents and how you look at your grandparents and just it's it's it never stops. Like it only just evolves like within the days, man. The way, the way I view that is like when you first got your first apartment or you were ever on your own for the first time, yeah. you were solely responsible of whether you ate or not yeah. or if you had housing, you realized what your hustle was like you really it was a, a look in the mirror of who you really were as someone that can get shit done no matter what i will make sure i will be okay even right. if it's i'm not going back to my mama's house. even if it's <laughs> even it's fucking oodles and noodles every fucking day yeah. i'm going to make this work and you really learn about your real hustle and your real drive and your real ambition with amara i've realized that with emotions oh. like <laughs> I, I now realize who i actually am yeah. because i am forced to deal with emotions that I never had to deal with before. Oh, bro. And it's, and it's, and it's only the terrible parts of your oh, emotions. Oh, hundred percent. It's not, the, it's none of the good stuff. Like all <laughs> no, the stuff no. that you think is going to make you like super dead. Yeah. I never went, Oh, I'm so charming. No, like, that's, that's, yeah, that's already there. That's already going like, to be here. You may have an anger problem, sir. <laughs> it's, like, it's like, you may need to go and take some walks when you're pissed off instead of slamming a PS5 <laughs> controller down. Like it's all these things that you don't realize because because you now have a 24 seven reflection of who you are as yes. a person, no matter what happens in your life, the biggest reflection of who you are is what that person it, turns into. And that's the live or die in my example of rent. Like yeah. therapy with yourself is like, can you pay your cell bill? Right. <laughs> yeah. That's extra. Right. Like, <laughs> can you, parsley. can you pay for rent and food is your emotions. I feel like with a child, it will represent your living emotions in yeah, front of you. Yeah, man. It's, 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 it's weird to see it because, you know, you're still not really having full conversations. Right? No, like you're still not. And, and I know it's going to hit me in a, 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 like a ton of bricks one day when like Ruby looks up to me and she's like, daddy, why do you curse when the Knicks are on? <laughs> it's like, Oh God, <laughs> you're like, watching. Stop watching me. I'm like, stop watching me. <laughs> yes, <laughs> like, yes. like daddy, why do you, why are you always, like, once, once that starts happening, when they start asking the simple questions that you've never asked yourself, mm -hmm that's when I'm really going to be like, oh, okay. no, no explanation for it. That's just who I am. It's like, yeah. wait, I can't say that. You can't say that. You have to, once they notice it, 
and and not even once they notice it, like hopefully before they notice it, you got to make sure that you're on your P's and Q's and you're just like, okay, like there's no way I can take the worst part, one of the worst traits I have and pass it on to this thing because now I'm aware of it. Yeah. Right. Like it's one thing if you have no clue and you're just like, oh, well, you know, whatever. And you can just maybe fix it when they're younger and just fuck them up. And once they get older, they're like, hey, you know, you're this type of person. And then you're old enough by the time that you're just like, you're a kid. You don't know nothing about life. Yeah. You're going to hope that before that happens, you've already had that conversation with yourself in the mirror or the person that you love. And you do your best to not fix it, but at least be aware of it. So it's like, OK, it's a part of you, but it's not anything that you're going to pass on to your your next generation. I, I, yeah. I, I like, mean, hereditary. At least I would hope happen, so. But <laughs> yeah. I even think. Lesser about some of like the bad, bad qualities I may have, because mm. those are kind of a, a given of things you have to change for your children. For sure. For sure. There's some stuff I think about like when they hit uh, 10 years old, what sarcasm is going to be like. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sarcasm. Having to explain, having to explain why daddy almost breaks his phone <laughs> when he stubs his toe is something I, I can work through. I'll right. figure, I will sure. figure that one out. Easily. Qualities that aren't that shitty. And how I speak to people, having to then explain that mm. to a kid that now actually has opinions and can like really take in everything that's being said and mm. understands tone to some degree. To so be like, why would you say that, Dad? <laughs> it was like, why, why do you think that's funny? Like, that's not humorous. Like, why would you do that? And I want to have a good relationship with, you know, I want to have more kids as well, but mm. have a relationship with my children and be myself as they get older in a good way. Yeah. Yeah. Sarcasm is a huge portion of my life. I'm going to have to like <laughs> figure out how to say th and wonder if they're listening in the other yeah. room. Like you, you want to watch Curb with your kids one day and, and have them <laughs> laugh with you. Like if that's not something that gets passed down, it's like, oh, my God, how are we? How did we come out of the same thing? Because if I can't explain that at that point, it leads me to my biggest fear once they're teenagers and start looking up everything I've ever done on the Internet since Ooh. I was 20 years old. And how much do you think about that? Often. Often. Yeah. Very often. <laughs> Me too. Yeah. No, there's videos of you spraying uh, oh, Hennessy from yeah, a, a squirt gun into a woman's mouth. And then she, and and then she, she, fall, she falls <laughs> over. Great clip, by the, the way. <laughs> Great clip. <laughs> I didn't move a muscle either. I couldn't. So I think it starts with, so we have to explain sarcasm to them first. Yeah. And then we can explain Henny Palooza. They have to, first off, she's going to have to understand that like, Baby, at one point, your daddy helped throw a party that was so popping <laughs> that people were literally risking life and limb just to be somewhat a part of the party. Right? Right. But that, but the importance of what dad did, whether it be with Palooza or the one of a hundred other ventures that you have, yeah, and how you've shifted culture and the importance from a corporate standpoint from an innovative standpoint isn't going to matter to them till maybe 25 years old. Uh, of course. Not. The only thing that their teenage brain is going to witness is you and I on a stage pouring <laughs> alcohol <laughs> right. into a woman's mouth. And I'm not defending it. I'm just saying there's so much layers to how we changed the world for the better as yeah. far as events, brand structure. Like that's there's so much a, importance to that's that. That's just a small part. But, like. but all they're going to see is that. And that's what scares me the most. Even like with the, I don't know, eight years of podcasting that I've done, mm. we have changed so much within this. But that's not going to come across when they just click episode 150 and dad is saying the most, and these, <laughs> these kids are already too progressive. Uh, Can you imagine in fucking 20 years? Oh me just God. saying fucking on this first episode, they're going to think I'm the worst father of oh all time. Oh my God. Oh my God. You said a bad word. So, kids are never going to see the, overall layers of what we've done in this portion of our lives. But you know, it's the wild until shit. maybe they're old, maybe when they're older, they'll get it. The wild shit about it is statistically speaking, our kids are going to be way more tapped in to the internet and finding all this other stuff than we ever were. Uh, like they're, sure. they're growing up in the world where it just is. And we yeah. didn't have to like break ground and break sort of things and break some eggs and make some omelets and all this type of stuff. They're just in a world that just, automatically has all this type of stuff yeah 
So it's not going to it's not going to even make sense to them that like, oh, there was a time before where, you know, I was like, yeah, there was, you know, secrets. Pre, pre, Remember pre, secrets? Yeah, oh, gosh, yeah, <laughs> secrets. Uh, Pre-COVID, you know what I mean? Like there was a time where people didn't really care that much about germs, and I was just shooting people in the mouth. With, yeah. Wow. <laughs> with Duce and yeah. Hennessy and oh, all okay. that type of stuff. And I mean, maybe we'll be padded <laughs> within all the other fuck shit that maybe their friends' parents did. Yes. I'm glad you brought up the point that it will be more normal to them to look up stuff. Like if we looked up stuff of our parents when they were our age, which isn't possible, right. but we would be like, holy shit. I, it would be. Maybe to them it'll be so normal because everyone's lives will be documented at that yeah, point. Yeah, that's like true. Like finding some shit from your parents is like, well, you know. I mean, I, I still spend the $8 every couple of months when I feel like I'm about to <laughs> go up on the level of like, Oh, tweet the leader. Saved so many careers, by the way. I hope Threads takes over and, <laughs> and we Elon just deletes Twitter. Please. Everything Please. that ever existed within Twitter, it's, I'm fine with it. I don't, I don't need the back. I have the memories. It's going to be, <laughs> it's gonna be one or the other. He's either going to delete Twitter, hopefully, and be like, all right, this was a terrible idea. Mm. Or it's going to like end up in the Library of Congress. <laughs> and like yeah. you could just go anywhere and just see anybody's thoughts from 20, 2008 into 2023. Has, uh, has Jazz brought that up in any conversations about, I mean, and... I'm talking to you. Your internet past is yeah. not bad at all. It's like, not terrible. I'm not talking to someone. That's <laughs> but if she said like, hey, eventually, like, we're going to have to sit our kids down and have this conversation. Um, That like what you see on the internet is. Yeah. Well, here's the thing, right? Like, I think I think if I would have had a child in 2018, 2017, oh, most definitely. Yeah. Um, I've made a conscious effort to be like, man, I, God, shout out Austin Mills. I think me and Austin had like this specific conversation at a Palooza one day where we were just like, and it was like peak Palooza. I'm talking yeah. about like sold out. He's headlining, do stays flowing everywhere. We were just looking at each other one day. He's like, yeah, we can't do this forever. <laughs> like, we like, and this no. is peak Palooza. It wasn't even like, oh man, like we got to start. Figure. Like we were just sitting there just like, this is so nuts. We were just like, yo, we cannot do this forever. And, um, like and, and it wasn't like, yeah, right. Yeah. Like it wasn't like that was the only thing I was doing. I was doing other stuff, but I just knew one day I'd want to have a family and I'd want to, you know, do stuff that, you know, one day my kids can look up and be proud that their dad was a part of. Now, I think by the time Ruby gets older, that she'll grow to appreciate what that was and what we did and yeah. the, the amount of artists we had on that stage and the amount of incredible careers that have been launched uh, yeah. because of Palooza and on the backs of Palooza and doing Barclays, all that type of stuff. But, you know, it was definitely on my mind. Like, you know, I, I, I want to make sure that when she looks and sees the stuff I do, uh, whether it's with the Knicks or whether it's with, you know, Fanatics or Points Bet or any sort of sports uh, or WWE or any of that type of stuff that, you know, she's proud of it and looks like, oh, man, you know, in, in five or six years when it's, uh, you know, uh, career day in school yeah. or bring your dad to work, bring your parents to work. I want her to feel like the big shit on, on, on campus or in, or in class. And, mm. and, you know, that's, that's definitely something I thought about for a long time. So, you know, me and Jasmine definitely had the conversations, but you know, I'm, I'm way more internet savvy than she is. That's the beauty of it. Like we're not, we're not wow. a TikTok couple. What a relationship. It's like, amazing. Oh, bro. You are lucky as fuck. It is, it is wonderful. Um, but you know, she's an old school girl, man. Like she's she still barely understands the concept of like, why does anybody need to know what I'm doing on social media all the time, all this yeah. type of stuff? Like, we're not necessarily a TikTok couple. We don't do baby content. Like, we're not. You know what I mean? I didn't have a baby to get my TikTok followers up or anything like Mine that. Mine are low, so maybe but, I should. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, nah, like. All right, it's time. We've, we've. Did you for a rollout? <laughs> Again. Again, yeah. You down for the rollout? <laughs> yeah. Down for the rollout. I might, I might do it the second time around. Second time around, the second baby might get all the rollout. Might do the gender reveal gender and all reveal. that type of shit. Yeah. I'm the pop. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm totally kidding, Bob. What if we. Put either blue Hennessy or pink Hennessy in the bottle, <laughs> yeah. and then you poured that into, <laughs> and that was the gender reveal. God, oh man, baby Palooza, bro. And we that do it at Webster Hall. Uh, oh, <laughs> yikes! <laughs> <laughs> nah, man, it's um, yeah, we we've talked about it, but like I said, man, I'm I'm way more like savvy to what's out there than she is, man. Like I get the Google alerts, I make sure shit is. 
whatever. It's not that there's stuff out there that I'm like, oh my God, if my daughter ever saw this. But, yeah. you know, like, I want my kids to be proud of me. I want my wife to be proud of me. Yeah. I want them to look and be proud of the man that's putting the roof over their head and all that stuff. And they're not doing no foolishness to, to keep a roof over their head. There's a lot of people in our space, in our media space, that do some things that I don't know if they even think past the next month what how it's going to affect them but i think about that shit all the time yeah like there's there's no way anything i'm doing in front of a camera or in a podcast is going to be in, way more important than what my daughter thinks of me or what, what why jazz I, thinks of me i pray that the forbes article pops up first <laughs> <laughs> with our I'll pictures also, yeah. oh my gosh yeah yeah <laughs> Baby, don't type in styles after you type. Stop, <laughs> stop, stop it. Stop it, yo. No, Wally and Mom.